Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. So we're getting straight back into this Career Mode guys, but just before we get into it, I just want to refresh your memories of how we're doing at the moment. So as you can see, we are currently ninth in the table, which isn't too bad by any stretch of the imagination. But just before we get into this guys, obviously I am uploading this on Thursday. So tomorrow Preston North End do take on Burnley in a massive local derby at Deepdale. So let me know in the comments down below what you think the score will be for that match. I'd be very interested to know. Or if you don't support Preston or Burnley, let me know what you think your team will do at the weekend in the comments down below. But we get off to a fantastic start in this episode with Jonathan Codger taking the lead at uh, Way to Stoke, which uh, a fantastic start for us, really. Only four minutes gone in this game, and Codger's managed to get the opening goal. Obviously, it was Garner who did most of the work to get that goal, but nevertheless, Codger with the finishing touch on it. And we were just going in, really. Gallagher has a great chance here, but the goalkeeper, in the end, manages to make a good save and just spill it and then catch it again. So uh, we really were on the upper hand in this game, and it really showed here. Daniel Johnson cutting inside. He gets a shot away, but the goalkeeper makes a good save. He loves that sort of shot. Johnson coming inside to his left. Obviously, he's not playing the best in real life at the moment, but on this career mode, he really has been hitting top form lately. And that's a fantastic save from the Stoke City goalkeeper to deny him. But then in the second half, guys, Stoke came out with a new sort of emphasis on the way they were going to play, and they were getting a lot of crosses into the box. And from a corner here, how on earth does that manage to go in in the end I literally have no idea a bit of shoddy defending from a corner I must say that's just so unlucky in the end it does go down as a Bailey Wright own goal which uh, you know when you got two players on the line and you can't stop that going in there's something wrong with it then but uh, then we do manage to win the ball back on a counter attack here we get the ball with Danny Simpson Simpson goes for a cross he finds DJ at the back post who manages to head it in and of all players you know Daniel Johnson is not the sort of player you expect to be heading the ball into the back of the net but it was a diving header and a fantastic one of that straight into the back of the net but you've got to give credit to Danny Simpson for this cross absolutely fantastic to cut the Stoke City defense apart there and that header from Johnson was absolutely explicit as well and in the end guys that was actually how that match did finish so a very good uh, comprehensive scoreline in the end of 2-1 considering that uh, you know going away to the Britannia that was a definitely a great result for us by uh, any stretch and then guys what I have decided to do for this series is I am going to be simming quite a few matches in this series in this season basically guys to make sure that this series is running along smoothly and that uh, we get you know we don't like stagnate on some certain months so we decided to simulate this match against QPR at home I was feeling pretty confident going into this match so we do decide to simulate this one and you know playing QPR shouldn't be the hardest test in the world and in the end we do actually manage to win that match 1-0 it's actually Jamie Walker with the goal so very decent as well and then we also decided to sim the Southampton match away a bit, a bit of a more testing match than the QPR match definitely and that's reflected in the final score which is what actually happens in this match guys it finishes 3-0 nil to Southampton. Not the greatest result for us by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, the reason I've decided to simulate uh, guys, hopefully you don't mind too much, but uh, like I said, I just want to keep this series running along nicely, and we don't stagnate on too many months. So, uh, into the next game now, guys, we are coming up against Manchester City. You can see here, I'm uh, contemplating whether to play a couple of players in this match, but uh, I'm liking this sort of system that we've got going at the moment, and that we implemented into the Stoke City match. Sort of playing that 4-3-1-2 formation. Seems to work out for us. Obviously, I am a massive fan of our wingers. You know, we got the likes of Van La Parra, Jamie Walker, Adam Reach, Chris Humphrey, players like that. But playing this sort of narrow formation, I think we get the best out of Stevie May playing in the camp role. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard. You know, you need to make compromises, I guess. But uh, it's definitely Man City who start this game out on the upper hand here. They managed to work a good ball out wide here. They managed to then get the ball in. But it was a good save in the end. A good catch, actually, from David Bentley. D Daniel Bentley, sorry, from Cavani. Very good indeed. But then they were just piling on the pressure. They get a chance there with De Bruyne. Luckily for us, Bentley was on top form yet again for us. He's just been an absolute hero. He's been an unsung hero, really, of the series so far. Because that's another absolutely excellent save from him. But then we do actually get a free kick here with DJ. So, uh... This was in a pretty decent area for him. DJ hits it, but what a save from the goalkeeper that was in the end. Unlucky for Daniel Johnson then. These were really the only chances we were, we were sort of getting in this game, really. We were only getting chances from, like, free kicks and corners in this match, really. We weren't getting too much from open players. Manchester City, obviously, have an absolutely explicit away record and their defensive record as well. But uh, City do then manage to get a chance here in the last minute. De Bruyne manages to be closed down. Some, you know, pretty... We try to pass the ball out of defence here. We're trying to hold on to the ball for the last last few minutes. In the end, that managed to backfire on us. Man City win the ball back here with Nazari. Nazari's looking up, contemplating his options. They managed to work a ball in here to Mangala, who fires over the bar in the end. Absolutely massive for us. I was so happy that Mangala actually missed that chance in the end, because that actually was how
how that match did finish in the in the end, guys. Nil nil against Man City. I'll take that every single day of the week, guys. And uh, then we do decide to simulate a couple more matches in this episode, guys. We decide to simulate the West Brom away match, and in this one we actually get very unlucky. We lose this match three two in the end, which uh, was a bit disheartening, you know, losing three two to West Brom. But uh, you know, it's not you know it's not the worst thing you know that could have happened in the world. And we also decide to sim the Swansea City match. This is the last game we'll be simming for this episode, guys. But uh, you know, I was feeling pretty confident going into this Swansea match, and in the end that was shown as we managed to get a one nil win. And it was actually uh, Van der Linden who got the goal as well, the centre back. So pretty decent from that aspect, if I may say so myself. So then guys, going into our final match of today's episode, we are playing against West Ham away from home. So I decided I wanted to play this match as I thought that West Ham would be a decent opportunity for us to pick some points up. You know, going away to Upton Park wasn't going to be easy, but I was I was toying around with a couple of strike partners, I was thinking. But I want you to comment in the comments down below, who do you think our best strike partners are? With all the strikers we've got available, you know, we've got Kodja, May, Beckford and Garner, of course. We've got uh, loads of other options. I decided to go with Garner and Beckford for this game, but uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think our best strike partnership should be for this series and uh, we are actually approaching January as well we've only got two games after this left in December so we are approaching January so let me know in the comments down below if you have any more transfer targets you think I should go for but pay it manages to start this game on the upper hand here for West Ham unlucky there he doesn't actually manage to get a goal but Bentley yet again was in top form for us he, he's just had an absolutely fantastic season for us so far in the last episode if you remember that guys I was singing his praises so much and yet again it's been exactly the same in today's episode, guys. But uh, Jermaine Beckford's tenacity pays off there as he manages to beat his defender. He then gets the ball into Garner, who manages to get it into the back of the net. That makes it 1 0 to Preston. An absolutely fantastic start for us. Garner then goes over to celebrate with all the substitutes. And I believe that's Joe Garner's fifth goal of the season so far in the Barclays Premier League. So definitely a decent return for us, especially since what he did last season in the Championship. You know, he wasn't really one of our top scorers in that season, but uh, he's really managed to come to form in this Premier League season. That Beckford and Garner partnership, absolutely fantastic. But then uh, West Ham then come forward here with Cresswell. Cresswell gets across into the middle, and it's Dimitri Payet of all people, the uh, un the you know the, the the hero for West Ham. Really, he manages to make it one one. Unlucky for us, and you know it's a header. That's not the sort of goal you'd normally associate Payet scoring. But uh, it was a fantastic goal in the end for them. You can't take anything away from that. You know it's Cresswell with the assist. Obviously, them two have been on absolute fire this season for West Ham. It was a good header in the end. Not much Bentley could have done about that. You know you can't put too much of the blame on that but then uh, Bentley actually makes another great save there he's really has been on top form in today's episode guys you know he get, their player gets through there but he manages to get down at his near post then what's going to be a bit awkward for goalkeepers in this FIFA but uh, Bentley manages to do well with it so fair play to Bentley for that but then West Ham then come forward here they were always looking very deadly with every attack they went forward you know you always knew they were onto something and then that was such an annoying goal to concede literally because Bentley couldn't have really done much about that I thought my defending was pretty tight for this goal if I'm being honest obviously we did in the end concede the goal but what I mean by that is I don't think I could have really done much more to prevent this goal from going in it's just a fantastic ball in from Noble and then the and then the finish for our mayor pay is absolutely fantastic but then we're going into the last moments of today's match now guys we we wanted to get something from this match the ball manages to fall to Daniel Johnson here Johnson what can he do can he pick out a pass may ball falls to Bailey right in the box who manages to get it into the back of the net absolute scenes at Upton Park in the final minutes. We've managed to grab an equaliser in the 88th minute, which is absolutely phenomenal for us. This is the sort of never-die attitude that I wanted to implement into this Preston North End squad, guys. I think that's what we've done here. I believe it was Stevie May with the assist in the end who, uh, I think, uh, he'll get quite a few assists playing in that camp position. You know, he does a lot of work in that camp position. He won't necessarily get the goals that the other strikers will, but I think in terms of assists, he should do pretty well this season. But uh, Bailey Wright with the goal in the end captain. I have decided to give Bailey right the captain's armband for the time being. Let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. Do you think he could possibly be a future captain for Preston? But in the end, guys, that was actually how that match did finish. Finished 2-2 in the end, which I was pretty happy with, if I'm being honest. You know, considering we were behind. So, uh, to wrap up this video, guys, as you can see, there are the fixtures that are remaining. Obviously, the fixture congestion at the moment is absolutely mental. We only get one day's rest until we play Norwich.
Norwich. But as you can see, guys, we do only have two games left of December. We only have the Norwich game and then the Stoke City game. And then uh, after that, we then go into January, of course. And uh, to start that off, we have Southampton in the FA Cup. So, guys, if you have any transfer targets, get them down below in the comments. I'd be very interested to know, you know, what sort of player do you think I need to sign to uh, strengthen this squad? But as you can see, guys, we're not doing too bad by any stretch of the imagination. We're currently in 11th, which I would have taken at the start of this series, guys. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Career Mode, guys. Let me know any transfer targets in the comments down below. Make sure you comment as well what you think the score will be tomorrow night against Burnley. I will be very interested to know. Come on, you whites. But, uh, apart from that, guys, make sure you check out all links in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next one.